Howdy there, strangers. I gotta tell you, there is nothing more I need during a high noon duel than my trusty six piece and the giant chicken I rolled in on. I mean, look at the size of my flamboyant giant cock. Alright, welcome to my channel, I am Def, and today we are taking a look at Outlaws of Thunder Junction 4 CEDH. Now, with a set like Outlaws where crime is rampant and pays well, there is a shocking number of cars that just don't want you to have all the fun. Which is very surprising to me, but anywho, let's start the review with the final showdown, which is also a new spell type with Spree. See the plus near the mana cost? Low mana value, but an additional cost for one or more effects. You can pick the same effect more than once, which is a shame, but yes, final showdown is an instant with these additional costs. Plus one, all creatures lose all abilities till the end of turn, so it counts things that are in play as it resolves. Plus one, choose a creature you control, it gains indestructible till the end of turn. Plus five, so free and white white, destroy all creatures. The final effect for six mana to clear the board at instant speed may be interesting, but the main point will be the first ability, to make all creatures in play lose abilities. Now yes, this is worse and less versatile than Dress Down, but who knows, maybe there are creatures like Chrom or Stax effect creatures you want to turn off and go for the win? It's an interesting and versatile spell that in the right moment might shine more than you think. Speaking of Stax, we move to High Noon, a one in the white enchantment that reads, each player can cast more than one spell each turn. Also, for 4 and a red you can sacrifice High Noon, it deals 5 damage to any target. So it's a rule of law effect in white red that can also turn itself off. At 2 mana this is something very curious. Not sure which deck might want this, maybe Timnatana? The only real downside to this besides it being a 2 color rule of law is that the steep cost to shut it down. However, as we know there are many easy ways to get rid of this while still benefiting. If you got the mana, just play a Grand Abolisher, blow this up and see what happens. This brings us to another white card. Yes, three white cards in a row and that is Avon Interrupter. A 2-2 bird rogue for one and double white with flash and flying and the following text. When Avon Interrupter enters the battlefield exile target spell, it becomes plotted. Plotted is a new thing also in Outlaws, so where you plot a spell, its owner may cast it as sorcery on a later turn without paying its mana cost. Remember, only at sorcery speed, doesn't matter if it's an instant or what. And finally, spells your opponents cast from graveyards or from exile cost two more to cast. So it can remove a spell from the stack, exile it, and it hates on breach. A really interesting bird with a nice asymmetrical effect. I'm really curious to see how many decks will actually try to play this. Let's switch up the colors and move on to a fun black card, Tiny Bones the Pickpocket. A legendary skeleton rogue, 1-1 for black with death touch, and whenever Tiny Bones the Pickpocket deals combat damage to a player, you may cast target non-land permanent card from that player's graveyard. Use any color of mana to cast that spell. Tiny Bones would also make an interesting commander with his former print, however I think it will just be at home in the various 99s. I mean I am specifically curious about this card and I want to play this in my decks but always have to remember it's always a non-land permanent card. No spells, no tutors. Speaking of the 99, let's look at a series of cards that might be a little specific and only fit certain decks rather than a wide variety of different ones. First things first, we get Reckless Lackey, a 1-2 Goblin Pirate for just 1 red with 1st Strike and Haste, and for 2 and a red you can sacrifice it to draw a card and make a treasure. So is this a Winota card? Maybe even a Muxus card? It's interesting for sure, and especially it can block many 1 toughness creatures or attack into them without dying because of 1st Strike. And it's a common, and can also be sacrificed later. Now, as with the story of this set, which is a fun smorgasbord of characters, there are some specific cards to Oko's crew, and one of them caught my eye, namely, Raska joins up. A legendary enchantment for black and a green that reads, when Raska joins up, enters the battlefield, put a death touch counter on each creature you control. Whenever a legendary creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So is this a black cauldron card? Or a Sisei card, maybe Joda? 
The Death Touch is a nice bonus, but anytime one of the many legendary creatures we play hits a player for combat damage, well, drawing a card is nothing bad to look at, it's like building your own Timna at home. But now it is time to return the favor. Literally, because it's another instant spree on this list, however it costs a red red and well, these extra things. For plus one, copy target, instant spell, sorcery spell, activated ability or triggered ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. And for another one, change the target of target spell or ability with a single target. Now we got many versatile and similar spells and yet nothing ever lives up to a deflecting SWAT, sure. And this is no SWAT. But it may be something new now that it copies basically anything. Krakashima may just be salivating over this, but maybe other lower card decks may be interested. Also, in Uncommon, it will be widely available. And we all know that the Izzet love copying spells and abilities, don't we? The next card we're gonna look at is something I think will be great in the 19 of a deck, but also in the command zone. Namely, Satoru the Infiltrator, a legendary human ninja rogue, 2 and a 3 for a black and a blue, and Manus, that reads, whenever Satoru the Infiltrator and or one or more non-token creatures enter the battlefield under your control, if none of them were cast or no mana was spent to cast them, draw a card. So one, this seems like a solid Yuriko card, a deck that loves to ninjutsu cards in, it's in the right colors, draws your cards, and stands with clones and ninjas and some interesting creatures your opponents may control, this may just get really out of hand. I also think it will be a fun reanimator commander. Sure, you can play zero drops to basically cantrip, or reanimate creatures to draw among other fun things, or reanimate creatures to draw cards among other fun things. Maybe even a Gairuda might want a piece of this, because yet it's even costed. I just find it funny that you can entomb a lab maniac, exile your library and reanimate it and it will draw you the win on its ETB with Satoru. How cool is that? Before we get to more commanders, we are getting a ton of uncommon legendary creature in this set, so I am wondering if the pauper players here are rejoicing. Are you? Let me know. With that, I give you Vile Smasher Gleeful Grenadier, a free 2 legendary goblin mercenary for black and a red that reads whenever another outlaw enters the battlefield under your control vile smasher gleeful grenadier deals one damage to target opponent in brackets assassins mercenaries pirates rogues and warlocks are outlaws so your commander is an infinite damage outlet for claustrum curry and dockside yes please yes there are other faster ractus colored decks but this is a direct win con in the command zone interesting right speaking of win cons in the command zone. Now let's look at another legend that can be a fun commander. Roxane Starfield Savant. For free, a red and a green, a 4 free legendary cat druid with when Roxanne Starfall Savant enters the battlefield or attacks, create a tap colors artifact token named Meteorite. With when Meteorite enters the battlefield, it deals 2 damage to any target and tap and 1 mana of any color. And as a bonus, whenever you tap an artifact token for mana, Add one mana of any type that artifact could produce. So it doubles your treasures from your, you know, saber tooth dog side loops? Fun. And yes, treasures have to tap to activate. But also, it looks like an infinite win with food chain and squee? How you ask? Well, the meteorite token shoot any target for two on the ETP, regardless of it coming in tapped or not. So a gruel food chain deck. Nice. But yes, with the last few cards I mentioned, we finally broke the Holy Trinity. Dog side. Food Chain and Labman in one set. And I'm not even done yet! Next, we're gonna look at Pest Control, a sorcery for a white and a black with cycling too. Its main ability is to destroy all non land permanents with mana value 1 or less. So, all tokens, all mocks, and all crypts, all ragavans, etc., etc., you name it. Sure, this is no culling ritual. 2 is, you know, more played and it doesn't ramp you, but still, for 2 mana, you can do a lot of damage to players. I guess death and taxes are really eating well today? Hmm, what deck might want this? Maybe Armex Timna? Maybe it's more of a tempo card than it looks like in the first place? Maybe I'm just rambling on to get to the next card? Speaking of rambling, we got Molten Duplication, which is a sorcery for one and a red that reads, create a token as a copy of target artifact or creature you control, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So yes, this is another Twin Flame effect. Still goes infinite with Dual Caster, but yes, it's another red clone effect which we do enjoy playing. There is an upside to copy an artifact in there somewhere. Clone decks like Atali, etc. also are excited to see this. 
also, the art is stunning. I mean, you could say that for the entire set, because, you know, both the art for the entire set and its story are awesome. Now, there are many more cards coming in this set that have potential, but the last card I want to talk to you about today, and to get all the awes out of the way, is Loot, the key to everything. That is a legendary Noble Beast 1-2 for Teamer, so green and a red and a blue, with Ward 1 that says at the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of card types among other non-land permanents you control. You may play those cards this turn. So yes, not counting lands or itself, it can give you a good selection of extra cards in your upkeep just by playing the game. I think loot has potential and is one of the new cards I want to actually build a deck around. Paradox Haze, extra turns, maybe even a pot style deck? I think there are some options here and I'm looking forward from turning this cute creature into a monstrous critter. I will let loot surprise us all in the end. But what about you? Did you like all the cards I mentioned today? Did I miss any specific ones and didn't talk about them yet? Is this video going on long enough? Remember to use the comment section below to praise my chicken and talk about more Outlaws of Thunder Junction. And with that, I will see you all behind the veil. Yeah! Ha!